Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, training webinar. My name is Josh Legler. I'm a contractor to Michigan Region 8 and uh, today we'll be conducting this uh, training on using the Michigan Image Trend Elite System or MyEMSYS to access patient care reports. Uh, we'll also focus on using uh, features of something called Elite Viewer within Image Trend Elite to uh, set up different uh, ways of looking at lists of patient care reports that may be helpful to you as you're um, going through different quality assurance or quality improvement uh, processes. So today we're going to cover the basics of just logging into the system, accessing patient care reports, interacting with those reports, uh, just cover uh, those bases uh, in case you may be unfamiliar with a few of the features there. And then we'll uh, really dive into how you would set up your own incident list views uh, to support the things that you'd like to do. Okay, so with that, let me uh, get my screen turned on. Uh, I'm at the Michigan uh, Image Trend Elite System login page. I'm going to log in with my own account today. So the, this step of the process should be pretty familiar to you. If you don't have access to the system, you can contact uh, Kevin Putman at the Michigan EMS office uh, to get access as a medical control authority. Today we're going to focus on the incidents menu. We're going to go to Elite Viewer. Uh, as your MCA account was set up for this system, uh, I worked with you to make sure that you could access the Elite Viewer. and uh, so you should be familiar with where that is, but we're going to kind of go through some of the uh, features that are available here for looking at patient care reports. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that I have set this up for training purposes today. Uh, so I have created an incident list view. The things that you see on here are a little different than what you would see uh, by default. I have hidden some stuff that would be uh, that would identify patients too much. Um, since I do have to demo this with real data. So I have set up a, a list view here where I have access to a couple of counties in the Upper Peninsula, and um, then I have just displayed some columns that would not identify specific patients but give you a sense of the records that are available to me um, so that we can go through this and, and uh, uh, practice uh, interacting with these reports. If you have access to the system, you are welcome to log into MyEMSYS yourself um, in a different browser window or screen, and uh, that way you can get a little bit of practice as we go along. So um, first, just some basics. I went to the Elite Viewer. I saw a list of recent incidents. Um, these are incidents uh, over the past couple of weeks. We'll get into this date range filter a little more in a minute. Uh, with the most recent visit uh, incidents, the top of the list. For each one of these incidents, I have several things I can do with it. Uh, most commonly, you would want to view the report, and that's going to be the print button. Uh, there are two ways to view these reports. One is a print view, which uh, gives you just a web page online view of the report, and the other a PDF, something that you could download in PDF format. There are also different templates that are available for the reports. So Michigan has several templates that they've published. Um, so you can choose to include or not include billing info or patient info, that kind of stuff. So generally, I just go with the default options uh, here, the uh, comprehensive report with billing. At this point, I'm not going to actually click OK on my screen because it would bring up this particular patient care report and would show you the patient's name and home address and all of the, the details uh, of that call, uh, but you're welcome to do that for uh, the patients that you're looking at who are within your MCA. There are several other buttons here. This uh, clock button will give you a history on this report. It'll tell you if anything was changed. It'll also tell you things like when the report was created, when it may have been exported to other systems, et cetera. And this button here is the message button. If you want to send a message to someone about that report internally within the Image Trend Elite system, you can do that. So I could click on the message button. Um, I could say that I want to make a new message. I can uh, 
select recipients here. Um, and so you can filter through that list of recipients. And then uh, I can select what type of message I'm sending to kind of tag it with a different uh, various categories and I can type in my message to someone. Uh, do keep in mind that this is an internal messaging system. Uh, with that, there's a couple of considerations. One is it's okay to uh, include patient identifying data in this message uh, because the recipients will only receive an email notifying them that they have a message in the system. The email will not contain the content of the message. So all of the information that you type in here is protected within the system. The other consideration is that uh, if the EMS agency that you're trying to communicate with actually uses a different product other than the state system for their reporting. Uh, so maybe they're using Zoll or ESO solutions or EMS charts, et cetera. Uh, then they may not see this message uh, because this message is uh, managed internally in the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. So this does work well for any agencies that are directly using the state system and you want to have a way to communicate with them about a specific patient care report and they'll know exactly which report you're talking about because this message is uh, linked with that report. And this uh, button to the far left is the attachments button. It will show you if the report had any attachments on it. It could have photos attached or a hospital face sheet uh, or even a video or audio files. Um, Anything that's visual, like um, photos or signatures or graphics, would already show up on the printable patient care report that you would view. But any other attachments, you could access them through that button. Additionally, there's one other feature you can take advantage of here if you want to look at multiple reports at once. Let's say I wanted to review all of uh, these, these first five reports. I can click on each one just a single click, it'll highlight it with a blue background. I can click as many as I need to. And I can use the bulk actions button and create print report. Everything has to belong to the same agency. I may have chosen multiple agencies in this case. We get a little shorter list there. Okay. Uh, it'll give me the same sort of uh, selector here, but when I hit OK, I'm going to get one PDF or one web page that has both of those patient care reports, just one right after the other. So uh, that could be handy if you need to review a bunch of reports uh, that are all kind of related to each other. You can print multiple reports in one PDF that way. Okay, next uh, I'd like to talk about the filters up at the top of the list here. Uh, there are a few filters that have been set up on my particular list view. I have a unit notified by dispatch date time, and there's a range in there that covers the past two weeks. And that's the default that always comes up when you first come to this page. I could also choose a specific agency. I could also choose a specific county. You may have other filters available to you. There's a button way over here on the right. When you click on that button, if there are any other filters, you'll see them show up here as well. So I do have one more filter available to me, destination name. Let's play with county here. So here I can limit my uh, search down to a specific county. Okay, so now this is showing me uh, just uh, patient care reports that happened in Marquette County. The date range is particularly important for a couple reasons. One is that, as I said, it by default limits to the past two weeks. So sometimes you need to change this date range to get what you're looking for. The other reason it's important is because it affects the performance of this page. The narrower date range you choose, the more quickly this page will load. So if I look for just calls from today, 521 to 521, uh, go ahead and click Go. That list loads very quickly. It only took a second or so to load. If I look for uh, calls from a very wide date range of a month or a quarter or a year, then um, that list will take that many times longer to load. So in some cases, you could be waiting for 30 seconds for a list to load um, based on the time frame that you put in. 
So that's uh, an important um, kind of performance tip. If you know you're looking for a specific report and you know what day it was on, uh, narrowing down that filter to a very narrow range will be helpful to get the list to come up quickly. Okay, last thing I want to point out on this particular view is that we can resort this list. Uh, it is sorted by unit notified by dispatch with the most recent ones at the top, uh, but you can sort it by any other column that you have on the list. Um, so I could sort by complaint reported by dispatch. That'll resort the list um, in that order. Uh, or by the patient's age and resort things uh, in that order. So this is a handy way to uh, look at patient care reports just based on what the state has already set up. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I actually created my own view for this training session so that I could hide patient identifying information. Uh, but you can create your own views for various purposes. You'll see up here it says view, and I'm in the training view, which is a view that I created, so it shows up under my views. There are also system views and built-in views. Uh, so for most of you, the elite viewer incident list is the one that comes up for you by default. Uh, it includes some patient identifying information, um, which is why I've chosen not to use it today. Uh, you can uh, create your own incident list views to take care of specific purposes you have. So I'm going to click the View All button here next to the View dropdown. And this is going to take me to the incident list views uh, settings page. You may not see as much as I'll see just because you have a different uh, permission group than I do. What we're really interested in here is that there are some views that have been set up for elite viewer, which is what you use. Uh, you'll see the elite viewer incident list uh, published by the state of Michigan, also a, a built-in view that image trend deployed, and this training view that I created. So I'm going to play around with the training view uh, today to show you some of the additional features that you can use. Um, but I'll point out that if I highlight this training view by clicking on it, I can set it to be my default view. I can also make a copy of it. Uh, this is handy for you because uh, to start out, you have the elite viewer incident list as your default view. That view is created by the state of Michigan, so you are not allowed to modify that view. Uh, it would affect everyone system-wide. However, you can make a copy of that view, give it your own name, uh, and that copy that you make will be a private view that's uh, available only to you, and then you can modify that copy as much as you'd want. So that's what I have here with the training view. It is uh, a private view that only I see, and I can modify this view. Let's go ahead and do that. OK, so this view, I can give it a name. Uh, it'll be a private view for you. You can type in a description to remind yourself what this view is for. And then you can select what columns are going to show up in your table of patient care reports, in that patient care report list. You can also set up uh, what filters show up at the top of the page. Uh, remember, in mine, I was able to filter by unit notified time, by agency, by county, by destination name. So I can decide what goes up there for the filters. And finally, I can set up criteria for my list. So let's walk through each of those. First, columns. Uh, I have these three columns that I've selected for my list. There's a really long list of columns that are available. Um, let's say that I'm interested in uh, looking at cardiac arrest calls. So I want, um, in fact, I'm going to, I think, to, uh, to be clean, I'm going to make a copy of this view and I'm going to call it my cardiac arrest view. Okay, here's my new cardiac arrest view. And let's say I do want all of that information, but I, I want the cardiac arrest etiology. And I'm interested in uh, what the cardiac rhythm was. Um, of course, I could look in each individual patient care report to see that information. 
this allows me to see that right from the list itself without even going into the patient care reports individually. Uh, and whatever other um, information you might uh, want. Okay, I can choose how my view will be sorted. So is it going to be sorted by unit notified by dispatch date time, descending, which means most recent at the top, or I could choose some other column uh, to sort by. Uh, the sort by options are dictated by what I have chosen in my columns. So everything that's on this list here that I put there shows up on this list, and I could use it as the sort uh, column. Next, I can decide what filters I want um, to have up at the top of the list. So I'm just going to leave those ones like that. And now I can set up my criteria for this list. Uh, you'll see I have put in one piece of criteria already. Unit notified dispatch date time is within the last one day. I actually put that in for training purposes because I knew it would make my list come up really fast for me uh, rather than looking at the past two weeks. For this cardiac arrest view, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and bump this out to being seven days. So I'm looking at stuff within the past week. But you could choose whatever you want or, or not even have that criteria at all. If you do take away that, that criteria, uh, image trend will still, by default, apply uh, a filter to set uh, unit notified dispatch date time within the last two weeks. Uh, and you're not able to override that by putting something longer in here. Okay, but uh, what I'm really interested in here is uh, this is my cardiac arrest view. So I want uh, to only be looking at uh, calls that are cardiac arrests. So I'm going to say where the cardiac arrest indicator includes one of these, and I'm going to select both of these yes values. Okay, so cardiac arrest indicator includes yes after EMS arrival and yes prior to EMS arrival. So now I have my new cardiac arrest view where I've set up the criteria to show me just the records I'm really interested in. Okay, having set that up, I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go back to the incidents menu and choose elite viewer. I'm going to switch from this training view to my cardiac arrest view. So you see my training view gives me 12 PCRs that were all within the past day. My cardiac arrest view is going to reload things. And it turns out it does have one patient care report that I have access to uh, that had cardiac arrest. I can see those key details as well as the cardiac arrest etiology was left blank and the cardiac rhythm was asystole uh, on this report. So if you're wanting to review through those cardiac arrest calls, this can be a handy way to just get the data that you need right there on the list itself. And then you can go in to look at further details on each report. We're going to uh, play around with a couple of additional uh, incident list views so you can see what's possible. Let's head back. My cardiac arrest view, I'm actually just going to, um, I'm just going to modify this view. And I'm going to make now a, a trauma view. Maybe I want some of the same information, but I don't care about the cardiac arrest stuff. However, I do want to see the uh, cause of injury. Let's show primary impression as well. Move that around a little bit. Okay, now down here uh, for my criteria, I'm going to take away the cardiac arrest criteria, and I'm going to set up criteria that will show me just my trauma calls. So I will say uh, injury, uh, possible injury, equal to yes. All right, so this sets up my trauma view, um, everything within the past seven days where there was an injury. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Back to Elite Viewer. I'm on the trauma view. Uh, you've probably seen this before where it has an error trying to load records. Uh, generally, if you just try again, it will eventually load them.
Okay, there they came. So there were 25 patient care reports that I have access to within the past week uh, that had traumatic injury. And I can look at the primary impression for uh, each of those views, and I can look at the cause of injury, uh, sorry, for each of those reports uh, as I look through the list. Okay. Um, let's uh, edit this again. And I'm going to call this my long scene time view. Let's say I want to look at all uh, patient care reports uh, where the scene time was greater than uh, 20 minutes. I could decide what it is I want to know about those um, uh, reports. Maybe I'm interested in uh, like what types of delays they may have said that they had on the scene. Uh, and maybe I also want uh, to know how many minutes they did spend on scene and maybe how long it took them to transport. Uh, I could uh, choose any filters that I want to modify. And then I can set up my criteria. So instead of this possible injury criteria, in this case, I'm going to be looking at long scene times. So minutes at scene. Uh, greater than or equal to uh, 20. So that has set up my criteria for my long scene time view. I'll go ahead and save that. And let's head back to Elite Viewer. And we'll give this one a minute to load. Okay, so here I have uh, 37 patient care reports that had a long scene time. I can see how many minutes they spent at scene on each of these reports. So this first one was 26 minutes at scene. They did record that there was a scene delay of safety for the crew. Uh, this one, um, 23 minutes at the scene, they said they had no delays. Uh, so you can look through and, and see for each of these how long they were on scene and, and what kinds of delays they may have reported on scene. Okay, one other, I'll just show you how I configure it. Uh, we won't uh, look at the actual uh, list of reports, um, but I'm going to configure one called uh, Medications Given. So let's say you want to look at all patient care reports wherever medications were given. There are certainly, uh, you know, many calls where no medications were given on the call at all. Um, what I'll focus on here is the criteria. Take away that minutes at scene criteria, and instead I will add in. Uh, what I can do is just say a medication given is not blank. So this would give me any patient care reports where there was some medication given. Uh, if they gave five meds, if they gave one med, doesn't matter, that, that patient care report would be on my list. So that would be my medications given list. Okay, and then let's uh, lastly take a look at this uh, idea that uh, what if you wanted to set up um, lists for each of the EMS agencies you work with so that you can more quickly uh, just look at List, uh, patient care reports from each of those agencies. So um, I'm going to, let's see, actually, I'm going to set up uh, a list view here that will give me just the UP East um, patient care reports. Uh, of course, I can uh, decide what I want to have on my list, the different columns, how I want it sorted, um, how I want it filtered, or what filters I want available. And then when I set up my criteria, what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and pick agency. And then I'll go ahead and um, select the one agency that I want. Um, for this list view. 
Okay, so that'll be my UP East um, incident list view. Go ahead and save that. And now if I were to go back to Elite Viewer using my UP East view, now I'm going to see just the patient care reports from uh, UP East uh, on my list. On that one, so if you did medications given, then under criteria, could you could could you list the specific medications that you were looking at? Say Narcan is a big one, or or opiates and sedatives you were giving. Can can that be spelled out in the yes. criteria? Yeah, you could. So let's say uh, we want to know everything where naloxone was given. And down here in the criteria, we would go ahead and uh, choose uh, medication given uh, is equal to, and then you'll see a list that will come up with uh, different options. And whether you spell naloxone or Narcan, either way, you'll find this one option here um, to set up the view that way. So that'll give you all of your calls with naloxone administered. You can use ands and ors. So one thing you could do here is you might say, um, uh, perhaps uh, medication is naloxone or um, primary impression uh, is, um, and so then I could choose different um, uh, options uh, like all these drug overdose ones or maybe the ones I'm, I'm really interested in the most. Uh, so this will give me everything where either naloxone was given or they had a primary impression that it was uh, these kinds of drug overdoses. So these incident list views are a really handy way to set up uh, topics for different uh, areas or, or things that you may be watching as an MCA administrator. We're looking at pain meds and sedatives, I guess, that, um, that are being administered. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. So you could use the medication given uh, thing, and you could look for the various, um, uh, let's see, what Valium is a diazepam or? Yeah, diazepam. Diazepam, okay, yeah, the generic name there. Uh, and and others that you know are, uh, you know, um, let's see, if I do includes one of these, yeah, there we go, then I can do a diazepam, and I could also choose, um, you know, morphine, oops, Uh, et cetera, to uh, get all the, the the medications that I know are pain medications. So anytime one of those was administered, I want to see that report on my list. Some of the ones we look at is, well, it's just mundane, but we still look at is, was aspirin given in chest pain? Um, EKG's done right. in chest pain. Um, You've already mentioned seen time. We also like to review all of the pediatric charts, so being able to sort charts by age. Um, all of these, these, this is going to be really helpful because we're doing this by hand now. Yeah, you could sort by age. You could also set up criteria or filters, right? You could set up a filter so that you can just type it in every time you go to the list for whatever age range you're wanting that day. Or you could set up a criteria uh, that would say age is less than, you know, 18 or 14 or whatever you want your cutoff to be. Now, um, is there, I can uh, set up, if I do a chest pain, I can set it up um, and I can also put down to make sure that an EKG was done and aspirin was given in the same list? Let's take a look. So let's, uh, I'll clean this up a little bit here. So let's say we want uh, all calls um, where there was chest pain. So uh, one way you could go is you could look at primary impression uh, is equal to um, cardiac chest pain or non-cardiac, whatever you're interested in. Cardiac chest pain, yeah. Okay. Um, there are maybe other ways that you could try to find chest pain as well, but primary impression is a good way to go. And then the question would be, what can you see on the list? Because that'll give you all the calls with chest pain. And you were interested in um, whether aspirin was given. Let's see if 
Yeah, we could do medication given. It's going to list all meds that were given on that call. Um, and what was the other? EKG. All right. So the cardiac rhythm that was obtained. And I would encourage you to just uh, get in, play around, create uh, your private list views, and just uh, tweak them, play around with them, see what's possible. Uh, and then as you start to, as you do that, you'll start to get these views to be really what you want them to be. You may start out with some basic criteria and then say, oh, you know, as I look through the list, there's still a bunch of reports coming up that I'm not really interested in for this view. So let's add something to the filter to get those out of my view, to get me down to just the ones I'm really interested in. And so you'll be able to refine those views over time. And of course, by being able to save them, it means that every time you come back into the system, you can choose one of those views, and, uh, and it brings that list right up uh, according to what you've pre-configured. Along the way, if you're trying to set up some incident list views and you get stuck or have some questions or need help, uh, don't hesitate to send me an email or give me a call, and I'll be happy to jump on, um, take a look at your list view with you, and see if we can figure out how to make it give you exactly what you're looking for. Okay, well, that uh, wraps up the training session for today on using Elite Viewer and incident list views.